I think there are basically two uh, factors. One is that the DPJ had never been in power, which means that they have lacked the experience of governance or government governing too. Um, so uh, I think that they overpromised in the campaign ele electoral campaign, and uh, once they they got into the power, I think they found out that you know some of the, the promise that they they uh, they made during the electoral campaign they they discovered they cannot deliver. So I think that is a disappointment, disappointment, and I think they kind of um, uh, they themselves lack uh, sort of self confidence. And the second uh, a sort of idiosyncratic factor is the money and politics scandal uh, involving Ozawa Ichiro, who was the powerhouse of the party sector, the former party secretary of the party, and uh, Hatoyama Yukio, the prime minister himself. And these two uh, big figures, uh, top two uh, figures uh, in the DPJ, had suffered this scandal problem and suffered a, pop a lack of popularity. So um, I think that the party as a whole uh, had to uh, uh, reinvent itself, uh, getting rid of these two leaders, and that's what they did just before the 2010 upper house election. I have a, dip, a bit of a minority opinion on this one. Um, a lot of people see sort of the frequent alternations of prime ministership as a sign of instability in Japanese politics and something that is not uh, warranted. Uh, in my opinion, I don't necessarily agree with the view that uh, frequent changes in, in uh, prime ministers uh, is a bad thing. In fact, if um, the government is responsive to the popular will, popular uh, public public opinions. Uh, the, if the prime minister is unpopular and are not supported by uh, general people, I think that the, that he should resign. And I think that this is just a reflection of how much uh, uh, democracy is entrenched in Japan at the moment. Um, so I don't necessarily think that it is a bad sign. I think it is more of a a stage where uh, perhaps a, a better uh, qualified candidates. Uh, will uh, appear in in the future, and man, only then I think that we have more um, a longer term a premiership. As long as the electoral system stays the same, uh, the same meaning the one that we have adapted in the two, uh, 1993 to 1994, the parallel system, mixed system. I think that the trend toward two-party system or the tendencies to uh, converge into two-party systems is, is likely to continue. So uh, what well, I do not necessarily mean that uh, the, the existing two parties will be the ones that are always uh, the two parties that are going to that are going to stay over time. But I still think that even though there's going to be there might be some kind of realignment, and I think that the after all uh, they will crystallize into two-party system. Um, and I think that should uh, give some stability in terms of uh, 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 p political structure uh, in a domestic politics. Internationally, I think that Japan faces great challenges. And I think people, everybody would agree that the rise of China uh, to a superpower status with its nuclear power and a magnificent economic uh, potential uh, is a very destabilizing um, element in East Asia. Uh, but I think that what uh, is really um, at, at the stake at the moment is not necessarily the rise, rise of China because that has been already taken, care, taken into consideration. Everybody knows that China is going to become a major, major power. So what is really uh, at issue here is what Japan is going to do in response to that situ uh, situation, and everybody's really watching what Japan is going to do. So, in 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 many ways, the ball is in the court of Japan rather than not in uh, uh, other players in East Asia, and I think that uh, Japan should have a, um, a very productive, open debate about what Japan should be doing in response to that new situation.